Okay, ladies and gentlemen, different computer, different setup, different everything. I uh, just wanted to take some time and speak to you for just a moment. Uh, I'm testing out this computer. I uh, haven't used it before to do videos, and so I decided to go ahead and set everything up because I'll be using it a lot more in the future. This is one of those mini computers, and I will tell you, I would rather have a mini computer. I would suggest you look into mini computers. As a matter of fact, any mini computer you get now, especially the more modern ones, the more current ones, will be faster than the one that I got. The one that I have is most definitely comparable to the computer I spent $600 for. I have a $600 computer Hewlett Packard computer sitting in front of me. It's touchscreen though. <laughs> this uh, television screen isn't touchscreen. I'm using the TV as the monitor. I had a 43 inch screen television that was a piece of crap. It didn't have um, didn't have the capabilities of connecting to Wi-Fi, and so I couldn't watch YouTube or anything on it. So it was a piece of junk. And I tried to return it, and the idiot company I'm not going to say the name because i'm not trying to advertise for those pieces of crap people they ignored it so i had to get the refund with the insurance never buy anything on amazon that is worth more than 50 dollars without getting insurance on it and it, well it didn't come in it yes it does it always comes with insurance you just have to go to a Shurion protection and look for whatever type of insurance you need just put the dollar amount and you'll get the insurance you just have to buy the insurance separately that's what amazon doesn't tell you you can buy the insurance separately for any product you purchase on amazon so um and they're not that bad they they've refunded everything that i've ever called them about they have not given me a problem and when they tried to give me a problem you know we straighten it out like uh, johnny said let's straighten it out Oh, you, you know I know Bobby did it too. Come on now. Let's straighten it out. Anyway, ladies, gentlemen, I've been helping quite a few people lately. Been doing a lot of motions. Whew. Been telling people, hey, you got to go back over this stuff. You got to do your own research. This is just a template for you. But I've done most of the work for you. All you got to do is a little bit of research and polishing it up and filing it on the record. So I told one guy, he had paid another guy, pay attention, $1,000 to file paperwork for him. All the wrong paperwork, ladies and gentlemen. The situation he's in, the paperwork that they're having him file is completely uncalled for. So let me say this so that everybody gets it. 16 years old is when I had to go to court. Well, technically 15 years old, but I say 16 because I was almost 16. I was three months shy of my 16th birthday. But 15 years old, I'm going into court by myself. No parent with me. Nobody with me. I'm by myself. I drove to the court building by myself. I don't have a permit. I have a driver's license. I did not have ever a learner's permit. I went straight to a driver's license. This is a provision under the driving code that allowed me to get a driver's license under the age of 15. I searched for the law, people. At the age of 15, I went and found the loophole. When I say I've been doing this for a while, I want you to understand, nobody helped me find that law. I found it myself. And I'm just now remembering that now, because it was no big deal to think about it before. But I do remember, hey, <laughs> my father was gone. We didn't have a vehicle for the family, and I wanted a car, and I wanted to drive. So, And I've been taking driver's school tests. I had a job. So what I did is I, and I also got tired of taking the bus. I realized that if I had a car, I could get rid of those two hours I was spending an hour going to and an hour coming back home from work and, and getting home at late at night in Los Angeles. And during that time, please, I already got robbed in the middle of the street one day. Literally robbed me as I was crossing the street. An idiot that I went to school with. And I don't wish nothing but whatever he's got coming to him. But anyway enough of that ladies and gentlemen so that you understand that's 15 years old i am looking up laws to figure out how to circumvent the law to get what i wanted now when i say circumvent the law that means i'm not skirting the law and violating any law i'm following their stupid law to the letter that's why they gave me the stupid license at the age of 15. didn't even argue with me all I had to do was tell them, no, here's your policy right here, and here's the code right here. That was it. Got my license at the age of 15. 
I promise you I didn't know nobody else who had done it. That's why I had to go do the research myself. The same stuff I do now when I'm looking up something, I go do my own research. I don't listen to nobody else tell me what to do. Nobody else even knew about it around me. Because why would they know? I'm the only 15-year-old kid. All the other people I knew were 15 years old. Or, well, since I was put in school a year late because I was on a small bus. No, birthday's in December. They didn't allow people to go to school at the age of four. And you couldn't check into school four months late after September. Okay? Because they just didn't allow it. So you had to wait a full year. Stupid idiots. And then when they wanted to skip me a grade, I told them, no. Shoot. All my friends were right there with me. What you talking about skipping a grade now? Yes, you, you had an opportunity to do that when I was a kid. Now you want to do that? You must be out of your mind. My mama had to teach me for a full year just so I could feel like I was a part of the school. You must be out of your mind going to skip me up and make all of that work for nothing. Stupid idiot. Anyway. Woosa. So. Ladies and gentlemen, the young man who went to the person and paid $1,000, the first thing I said is, why would you pay $1,000? Ladies and gentlemen, it's a traffic ticket. The traffic ticket, the violation, the cost for the violation isn't even $1,000. Y'all, I'm going to say this because some of y'all, when you get desperate, when you panic, you don't think. And you've got to stop doing that. That's not healthy. That's not culture. <laughs> Actually, that's anti-Semitic when you say it ain't culture. Anti-who? Seismetic? Man, there ain't nobody talking about no medical. Stop that. Get that out of here. Anyway, as I said, ladies and gentlemen, many of you are desperate and you're going to the wrong people. I can tell you you're going to the wrong people. I'm not here to talk about those people. Now, please understand. I am not here to talk about those people. I'm not here to say they're good, they're bad, they're ugly. I'm not here to say nothing about them. I'm here to say if somebody's going to charge you $1,000 just to help you pay attention with a traffic ticket, something's wrong. Something is wrong. And if they're just going to be filing paperwork, see, at least with me, I do the motion right there in front of you. And I'm nowhere near. I do five or six motions for people if they will allow it. Just so that they can have enough ammunition and tell them how the sequence is to filing the document. Telling them that they have to do their research. Because you don't want to walk in court with some document. You don't understand what the document is talking about. You don't want to do that. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. As I said. And it's 100% necessary to say it. Many of you are making a lot of mistakes, and that's because you're trusting man. Stop trusting man. I'm not saying to trust yourself because you got yourself in that situation, so you definitely can't be trusted. Sorry, it's just the way it is. I said, I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. Y'all know the song, that's just the way it is. Things will never be the same. Oh, that's Tupac. I apologize. That ain't the original. Anyway, so don't do that, people. Don't be desperate. At least, even if I'm busy, at least throw the question my way. Just ask the question. And you got the chat GPT models. I'm telling you how to get the answers you need. I'm telling you how to get around their so-called blockage. By asking the questions a certain way, you can get everything you need, everything you want. Lord, have mercy. I mean, literally, have mercy, because I don't understand it. So... I'm not here trying to solicit more money. As a matter of fact, I'm trying not to have as many more consults, uh, especially doing two two consults yesterday, or Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, today's Sunday, but two consults on Friday. Now, I want you to pay attention. Seven hours and 30 minutes was the total time for the combination of both consults. I thought you were there stinks as one hour and 45 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee people at least an hour and 45 minutes. But we, the consult lasts as long as it needs to last. As a matter of fact, like I said, uh, earlier in the week, a young lady had to go to a doctor's appointment. So we had her consult, and while she went to her consult, I continued 
doing the work. Why? Because she paid for the service. Now, it is a service because what's happening is they're paying for the time that I have to take away from the corporations that I work for. You see, I volunteer at 23 different companies. That's right. That's me. Jack of all trades. <laughs> and an expert at none. <laughs> anyway, so it's just what's done. Now, there are going to be some people, because we have the stupid attorneys who are running into problems with when I do paperwork, <laughs> man, because they can't get around it. I hit them with so many presumption killers that they can't get around. Oh, by the way, if you're doing motions, you want to kill presumptions. You need to know what particular items that are being put in the complaint is a presumption, such as the original charge is a presumption. There's no facts or evidence in the record. So nobody can claim just because the prosecution has a charge against you, you're innocent until proven guilty. So how can they ask for an exorbitant amount of bail? That makes the bail excessive. Why does it make the bail excessive? It makes the bail excessive because you haven't been anything but charged. Bail is only supposed to assure your appearing, excuse me, appearing, anyway, it's supposed to assure you're coming back to court. Not supposed to be a penalty. Okay, so if it's any, that's why you see California, uh, what's his name, Garcia, no, uh, for, uh, forgot that man's name, that's the DA for Los Angeles. Let me tell you something about him. He is 100% on the money. Why? Because he's definitely letting everybody and their grandmama know that the law doesn't work that way. We don't set excessive bells just to keep somebody off the street just because we hate them or don't like them or believe the charge that the prosecution has brought against them. Everybody deserves bail that is reasonable. If you release Johnny on his own recognizance, you have to release Tommy and Mary too. They committed the same exact crime. So uh -uh, don't you dare. Or Excuse me, they were accused of committing the same exact crime. So they deserve the same exact bail. Now, hold on now. But if you start raising bail proportionate to a so-called crime, then that's where the problem is. That's where bail becomes excessive because bail is not set according to the crime. Bail is set according to the demanding or requiring a person to show up in court. Do you see the difference there? So the people who set bail standards, that's what they have to weigh. They have to weigh being fair. They also have to weigh not assigning it to a person just because of the act committed all right so once you understand these things then you can start doing your motion so understand that most of the junk that the prosecution brings is a presumption you have to kill the presumption most of the junk coming out of the judge's mouth is a presumption you have to kill the presumption so just start thinking about all of the stupid things like appearing in court and saying a plea. No, I don't want to plea. And when they say, well, I'm going to sit up here and order an evaluation of you. Well, if you order an evaluation of me, you're going to have to order an evaluation of everybody else in here. What are you talking about? Well, you're ordering an evaluation because I ask questions and because I have certain beliefs, and because you're going to hold me accountable for my beliefs, that's a violation of the Constitution. So as to imply due process and equal protection of law, then everybody in here needs an evaluation. Since they all got questions too, I sat up here and listened to you answer questions, so you know how to answer questions. You ain't that stupid. So since you ain't that stupid, uh, excuse me, audience, what I'm saying about the judge right now, and I'm talking to the audience, is I'm saying that the judge is stupid, but by saying you ain't that stupid, she can't hold me in contempt because it's not a direct attack on her intelligence. It's me saying that I'm giving her a little bit of credit for not being that stupid. Okay, excuse me. Let me go back and talk to the judge. Now, as I was saying, you want to go ahead and order that? You go right ahead. No, no, no. That's all right. I'll pass the stupid psychological evaluation. I've had those before, but this time... We'll be coming after you for your unreasonableness. See, judges have to be reasonable. You understand? Many of you are getting into a back and forth with judges. <laughs> you ain't supposed to be in a back and forth with a judge. 
judge is not supposed to be asking you any questions. You're not there to testify. Excuse me. What, what, what do you think this is? This is not a, this is not a cross-examination. This is not an interrogation. This is not an inqu inquisition. What is wrong with you? Somebody has brought a charge, so I have the right to confront the witness. Where is that witness at? Well, this is pre-trial. There is no such thing as pre-trial in the Constitution. Go ahead and take a look. Do you see anything about pre-trial? It says no one can be held to answer. You had a warrant. Where is the notice of hearing? What do you mean, notice of hearing? Well, no warrant shall issue unless upon probable cause. Well, probable cause means there had to have been a hearing. You and somebody else met, or some judge in this building met with somebody to issue a warrant because the police can't issue a warrant based upon their own ignorance. Warrants can only be issued by judges. So when was that hearing held, and why wasn't I notified? And if you notified me, where is the evidence and proof of service? Ladies and gentlemen, many of you are allowing them to put warrants out for your arrest, and you're not challenging the warrant. That's the first piece of junk they put on the record is the warrant. And because you don't challenge it under presumption, when one does not speak up, that presumption becomes the facts for the case. So when you say, oh, I plead not guilty, your honor, now you just told the court you admit that all the evidence on the record is factual. Go back and look up genius of the record. Been doing videos on it for too long now. Bradley Christopher Stark tried to tell so many people. And then you appear in court? Man, that's another submitting yourself to the court's jurisdiction. The same that you do with a plea. Plea holds two meanings. Submitting yourself to the court's jurisdiction and admitting, testifying against yourself, the genius of the record. You see what makes me different than all these other people? You won't hear nobody talking about those points right there. But see, what I learned, and I want you to pay attention. Remember I told you his name was Richard Fuller. What I learned from Richard Fuller, and I give Mr. Richard Fuller his credit, he was a rocket scientist, I'm not joking. He literally was a literal rocket scientist. And they came after him because he knew that there was no enactment clause for the IRC, income taxes. There's no enactment clause, ladies and gentlemen, of the IRC. Go ahead, find it. Find the enactment clause and find where the president signed the IRC into law. That's called the legislative process. Congress had to have had their little sessions. They had to have voted on it in the House and the Senate, and then they had to have sent it to the president. He had to have signed it and sent it back to Congress, and then they had to have enacted it into law. Well, guess what? The IRC, the Internal Revenue Code, that never happened. So you got problems with the Internal Revenue Code and the Internal Revenue Service? Just simply ask them to show you the enactment code and the presidential signature on the IRC that you're being charged for violating because you're only required by law to follow the law, which means the IRC is not positive law. It's not law. Go ahead and look at it and see if Chapter 26 is positive law. It ain't law. It's a code. Don't take my word for it. Go do your research. Now, I say that just to say this. I tell you something different. I tell you, write that junk off. When you go to court, charge them per day for every day you have to go to court. Charge them for your meals, charge them for your transportation, because that's business. You're handling business. Then I just did a video showing you how, when you go to court, that court case, you have personal interests. Wait, let's show you this. Hold on. Let's show you this. We gon', we gon' do, do we do this stock market one? No, we're going to go here. Video details. Video. This I told you, new video. Hold on now. Wake up. We're going to be talking about these stocks today, uh, especially this one. We, we're going to be talking about it. You see, because the fact that it closed down here when it was all the way up here, man, they've been playing games with us with this particular coin. They've been playing games. Anyway, watch this. Wake up. Oh, can't say wake up because it's turned completely off. I'm going to pause y'all for just a second. Y'all don't mind. Is it not so that when one is involved in a court case, comma, they must rebut presumptions before the court, comma, or the presumption will become facts in the case? 
Question mark. Yes, in general. Stop listening. Stop listening. Yes, in general. Uh oh, I don't have a voice. Oh, that's right. This is the ChatGPT. I haven't updated it yet, so it doesn't have a voice, y'all. Dag nabbit. I have not messed with this to give it a voice, so we'll take care of that later. I haven't gone through the settings, people, and that's a settings issue. So I haven't gone through the settings to. Yeah, we'll. We'll let it be that way. All right, now. Keyboard shortcuts, we don't need that. I just need to see if it, because I ain't done this in a while. Oh, we're going to do all the extensions. Yeah, we're going to do all of them extensions. Ooh, doggy, we're going to do all of them extensions. And let's do that. This is a ton more. Oh, I ain't got no more extensions like there. They got a ton of extensions for this poll thing. And let's see, user prompts, custom syncs, GPT prompts, prompt tags. I don't need none of that junk. Forget that stuff, and I'm going to minimize this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, ChatGPT says, in general, when involved in a court case, parties may need to rebut presumptions. A presumption is a legal conclusion or an assumption that the court accepts as true unless it is challenged or disproved by evidence to the contrary. So if you hear a presumption, you let them know that by law, you idiots have raised a presumption. I have the right to rebut your presumption. And I can do it with a preponderance of evidence because I get to use the Constitution and you don't. What are you talking about? We don't get to use the Constitution because you can't use that junk you're using and use the Constitution. It's a conflict of interest. So you're prohibited from using the Constitution, whereas I'm not. Because I know that the Constitution is a superior law or supreme law that it operates over your case law and your general codes, moron, okay? That's how you take care of that. Now, let's do one more thing. Wake up. Wake up. Is it true that the courts can only order a mental evaluation if an individual is displaying conduct that indicates that they might be insane, comma, under the influence, comma, of unsound mind, comma, or incompetent, and that the judicial officer is not qualified as a medical personnel to make such a determination? Question mark. And unless those prior elements are evident, comma, no mental evaluation can be ordered by the court? Question mark. Can you show me two case citations supporting this conclusion? Case. Question mark. Also, got one other issue, comma. In order for a judge to order a competency test, comma, it cannot be based on an individual's beliefs because that would be a violation of the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, period. And if one is simply rebutting the presumptions of the prosecution and or of the court, comma, a competency hearing would be improper under law. Comma, because an individual does have the right to challenge presumptions. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I guarantee you, if you guys start challenging presumptions, whew, man, everything changes. I mean, everything changes. Now, pay attention. In the context of ordering a mental evaluation or competency test, courts generally require some indication that an individual may not be competent to stand trial or to participate in legal proceedings due to mental incapacity. This standard involves assessing whether the individual has sufficient present ability to consult with their lawyer with a reasonable degree of rationale, understanding, and whether they have a rationale as well as factual understanding 
of the proceedings against them. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not law. That is somebody coming up with a standard. And I don't take standards no more. I didn't I didn't pass standards. I don't do standards no more. The law says that the judge is not a medical officer, so incapable. So as long as you're challenging their presumption and asking questions, they cannot order you to take a competency test, but you guys don't know that. So that's why they've been doing competency tests on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I let them do competency tests on me because I was testing the system. I told everybody that's what I was going to do. I told people that four years before it even happened. Okay, I don't need to test the system anymore. I didn't did it every single time, which is why <laughs> they won't let me back in court. Because I didn't prove them to be stupid, even calling one of their judges stupid on the record. Because he was stupid. Marcos Lopez. He's a judge out of Puerto Rico. Go look him up. He's an idiot. Well, the court acknowledges it and files it into the record. I gave him a money order for $2 million the day of the arraignment. Because I told him I plead innocent. And he says, you can't plead innocent. Why not? Where's that rule at? That I can't plead innocent. If you want me to plead or something, I'll plead. I plead innocent. He says, well, you can't plead innocent. I say, okay, then I plead guilty to the facts. Oh, well, if you're going to plead guilty, we can just go ahead and suspense with everything, and I can go ahead and order sentencing. Oh, I said, no. I said, I'm pleading guilty to the facts. Show me what the facts are in this case, and I will plead guilty to them. There are no facts in any of the cases. It's all presumption, people. The whole case is presumption. I know you learn a lot from a dummy. First case citation supporting the need for evident mental incapacity before ordering an evaluation. This is one case from the United States Supreme Court. In this case, the Supreme Court held that the trial court must conduct a competency evaluation if evidence arises or raises a bona fide doubt regarding the defendant's competency to stand trial. Ma'am, I don't need to give you your opinion, your, the law says you can't even give me your opinion. Shut up with all that. You doubt. I don't care about your doubts. The law has to doubt me. So show me the doubt in the law. Now, this is Indiana versus Edwards. Now, Edwards in 2008, the Supreme Court ruled that the states are permitted to insist upon representation by counsel for those competent enough. Wait, wait, wait. Permitted to insist upon representation by counsel for those competent enough to stand trial under this case right here, but who still suffer from severe mental illness. Yes, they can force an attorney on somebody who's suffering because they now be, need a guardian. That's why that case is. That, that's easy, that one right there. Now, regarding the statement about competency hearings being improper if an individual simply is challenging presumptions, it is accurate that challenging legal or procedural presumptions should not alone trigger doubts about competency. Competency evaluations are generally intended to assess an individual's ability to understand and engage in the legal process, not their willingness to agree with the court <laughs> or the prosecution. The First Amendment protects the right to hold and express beliefs. Therefore, the judge ordering a competency evaluation based solely on an individual's express belief would indeed be a serious constitutional concern. Ta-da! <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. What I'm trying to say to all of you, because it's necessary, that I haven't been doing this for two days. I've been doing this for a while. So much so that I'm tired of doing it. But for people who need the help, I give them the help and I remind them, like I had to remind one guy, I'm doing a motion for him. And we have a bartering agreement. So I'm doing a motion for him. And I told him, I'm giving you this motion, and whether or not you use it is on you, but I'm fulfilling my obligation. I've completed the motion, now i got to do the proofreading, now i got to polish it up so that it's not so hard-hitting, because you guys know how much I love the courts and love the judicial uh, municipal stupid officers that sit behind benches thinking that they're superior to people when they're just servants. So you know how much I love them. And so I have to tone it down so that one love, one life doesn't come across in the wrong way. You feel me? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Now, with all of that being said, I ain't got to renew. What you talking about renew plus? I've already paid y'all. Y'all, oh, look at them three little stars. I ain't renewing nothing. 
I'm not renewing ChatGPT, and I'm not renewing uh, what's uh, the other one, Gemini. I'm definitely not getting Gemini. Gemini is a piece of junk, in my opinion. I will go to Poe. I like Poe and Perplexity. Yeah, I'm not going to pay for Perplexity. As long as it's free, I'll be free. But Poe, I will use Poe, okay? I will pay for Poe because I'm a Poe man. I just Poe, 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 Poe me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. I got a, a little puppy outside that I'm about to yell at because she ain't supposed to be barking just to be barking. Ladies and gentlemen, my dogs don't get to bark just because they feel like it. Y'all heard me say that many, many times before. You'll never hear the boy barking unless something is going on, okay? Unless he's confused about something and he needs to get my attention to find out if it's okay or somebody's walking on the property and he needs to get my attention to let me know, hey, do they belong here? That's the only time you'll hear him bark. She's a puppy, puppy, puppy. I got her at 11 weeks, and he was 11 months. And so I did that on purpose, making the female younger than the male, before the female and the male were the same age. Okay? But now the female is younger than the male, so that he becomes her protector. But she's going to be bigger than him, but he's going to be the alpha, the domineering one. He's going to be the one taking the lead, and that's what I would rather have. Why? Because he was first, like Adam. No joke. He was first, so he deserves to have the run of the yard. He came first. Hey, if you go to jail, you'll find that whoever was in the cell first has that rule. So other people have the same rule, so don't get mad at me because I have a rule that is etched in reality. Because it's all about reality, not about a salary. (laughs) Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you all have a good day. I just wanted to express that there are a lot of you out there who got court cases going on. And, but I don't want to pay that. That's too much money. But you'll go pay somebody five hundred. I mean, a thousand dollars. I mean, two thousand dollars. I mean, fifteen hundred dollars to do nothing for you. Again, Richard Fuller, the best thing Richard Fuller taught me is to attack the evidence. So. We're going to take about five more minutes with Jose, Jose, Jose out of Puerto Rico. When he says, you know, everybody here says you're crazy, but I think you know what you're talking about. Now, the reason why he could say he thought he knew what I was talking about is because he observed me. He knew that I wasn't crazy because of all the talk. Well, after he walked out of jail seven days after talking to me, Okay, he spoke to me one day, and seven days later, he's walking out of jail. Okay, now everybody who thought I was crazy was coming and asking me for help. Then there was one guy, I had a simple, there was a simple fee that they had to pay. Because they're in jail, they can't pay the full fee. So there's a simple fee that they had to pay. And some of them were drug dealers inside the prison. So you better believe they was going to pay, but one guy didn't pay. And so I never followed up on his paperwork. I didn't tell him I needed to follow up on his paperwork because he wanted to be, he wanted to play me. And I saw him trying to play me. So when he came back, I told him, I said, you didn't pay me. And he shrugged his shoulders like, oh, well. I said, okay. And the paperwork had already been filed. I had already completed everything. So he thought. And he said, the prosecution offered me a plea for five years. I said, good, take that. That's good. And he sent somebody to come and translate to me, saying the maximum is five years. And I said, oh, well, that's what he gets for thinking that it was okay to do me that way. And I still could have helped him, because I could have cleared that up easily. But everybody reached what they saw, and I wasn't going to help his stupidity. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? I always live by that rule. Everybody reached what they saw. He tried to get over on me, tried to get something that he agreed to pay for, $60. He tried to agreed to pay for it, and he got it for free because he didn't pay. So I didn't put in the other documents that needed to go with that, which means it stalled. Now, to show you how pivotal helping them people out in Puerto Rico was, go ahead. It's a legend I am because I stopped their entire court system for three months. They could not process a single one of the clients of mine in that facility yes i was called a jailhouse lawyer so that means they were my clients that means i was actually considered a lawyer by law 
Sorry, not my. Hey, I didn't come up with that jailhouse lawyer thing. The courts did. That's why jailhouse lawyers are allowed to have meetings with people, and the officers can't stop them. The judges tried, but the officers, yeah. And I dared the judges. I kept saying, "Oh, you want you want me to stop? You're threatening me with contempt. Oh, by all means, charge me with contempt. I would love to bring this matter to the Supreme Court." And I never heard from them again. They would put me in isolation and then release me from isolation six months later. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I've been in and out the system on purpose. I went to Puerto Rico, went into the Puerto Rico system on purpose, told everybody that they were going to come after me, and I let them do it in Puerto Rico. Why? Because Puerto Rico is the um, armpit of America. They didn't even believe me when I went in there. So I told them, have your people go watch, and I told them what videos to watch that were still online at the time. That was the channel they took down. But the videos that were still online at the time, told them, go ahead and watch. Why? So that they could hear me say what I was getting ready to do before I left the United States to go to Puerto Rico. I'm, I'm sorry, before I left New Mexico to go to Puerto Rico, because Puerto Rico is part of the United States. And they would watch that and they would see that I was telling the truth, as opposed to just me saying that I put myself in there. And nobody could believe why somebody would do something like that. Ladies and gentlemen, the people in there don't have anybody. They can't rely on the attorneys. Everybody I talked to in the last three weeks all went to an attorney first. And their attorneys were telling them to settle or to do this or to do that, something that would cost them. And I'm sitting up here saying, oh, no, 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 no. You got to do this. You got to do that. You got to do this. You got to put a stop to what they're doing. Because what they're doing right now is they're making it seem like they're going to walk over you. So you have to step up and say, no, I need you to show me this. No, I need an evidentiary hearing. The number one tool you guys have in every court case that involves a criminal matter or a, what you call it, a bankruptcy, is your right to ask for an evidentiary hearing. Now, hold on now. Those of you in bankruptcy, do you know that you have a right to a trial by jury? Hold on now. You, you didn't know that? Go do your research, people. Go do your research as to why jury trials are allowed in bankruptcy court and under what circumstances. Do your research, people. Like I said, this whole conversation is me not showing off. It's me saying that eventually I'm not going to be able to communicate with people and I'm not going to be able to communicate this knowledge. So you better take advantage of it now. That's what I've been trying to say. I don't know why it took me so long to say that to all of you. I guess I was afraid of saying it because it would mean the inevitable is soon here, of which I don't wish to see. So that's the nutshell, ladies and gentlemen. That's why there have been over 200 videos published by me since January. Well, no, we could say 300 now. We could definitely say over 300 videos published by me since January. I would also, we're going to do it for another 40 seconds. I would also go and listen to each one of the songs, but I would listen to the words of the song by looking at the screen and seeing what's being said, because that's me explaining what needs to be done. Lord have mercy. You can do a lot with a song. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only, I'm not the first to do educational videos with music. And yes, I'm going to keep doing that because I am enjoying that. I mean, some of these songs are all right, okay? Some of them I got to go back and listen to. Like I said, I'm creating seven albums. I got one album now, so far. Seven! Got to go. Five more minutes. Oh, no, three seconds. Two, 